granddaughter Lily absolutely loves horses. Matter of fact, she took a little closet in her basement and she brought in her horse stable and set up a corral and she just plays with all her different horses down here. Horses are an amazing creature. It is stunning what God has given us as a gift with these creatures. Their design, first of all, is astounding. Unlike any other animal, almost all mammals, uh, we have sweat glands, but horses are totally covered with sweat glands because when they're running, they're burning an enormous amount of energy. Their whole body is sweating, but the sweat, unlike human sweat, which is clear and filled with saline, it's like white and lathery, and it flows across the hairs and the skin, evaporating very, very rapidly because it lowers the surface tension and allows enormous amounts of cooling of an animal that's generating an enormous amount of heat. The horse's heart is unique amongst all mammals. For its size, the horse has a heart much too small for its body size. In order to compensate, God designed in the middle of each hoof, there's a V-shaped little sac, pools blood, it's called the frog. Every time the horse takes a step or runs, the blood is pumped up through the leg. When it lifts the hoof, the blood flows back down. It's like it has four additional little pumps. One of the other things about a horse that's just a very historic in nature, when Darwin proposed evolution as where everything came from, where horses came from, where bacteria all the way to people they came from. And he said one slowly turned into another. It didn't gain much traction. Europe and the world was still coasting very much on its Christian culture and believing in God as creator. And this idea that a bacteria could turn into a human just seemed too fantastic. Following Darwin was a man named Huxley. He was called Darwin's bulldog, promoting evolution everywhere he went and was looking for examples to make it more popular. When he had visited a Yale University in the late 1800s, the professor there had set up a display of the evolution of horses, where you had a very small creature that had multiple toes, and then an in-between sized creature that was a little bit taller, kind of a horse type structure that now had two toes, and then finally the modern horses with a hoof. And he lined up all these fossils that showed this transition from a non-horse type dog-sized creature all the way to a modern horse. And Huxley saw that and he realized that's what I've been looking for. Horse was incredibly important to everybody in the 1800s. There were no automobiles. The horse was the mode of transportation. And to take something that everybody was familiar with and popularize using fossils and stuffed animals and pictorial demonstrations, of how its teeth and its hooves and its size had changed and just lined them up uh, became very convincing for a large number of people and evolution was gradually accepted as a scientific fact. Except it's all wrong. It was promoted for a hundred years in museums. Dr. Niles Eldridge is the curator of the American Museum of Natural History. And this is what he has to say about the horse display in his museum back in the 1980s. There have been an awful lot of stories, some more imaginative than others, about the nature of history of life. The most famous example is still on display in the American Museum downstairs is an exhibit of horse evolution prepared 50 years ago. Now I think that is lamentable, particularly when the people who proposed these kind of stories may themselves have been aware of the speculative of nature of this stuff. What we now know is that all of those creatures, the little dog-sized animal, the in-between sized animal, the modern horse, They've all been found in the same rock layer, so they can't be an ancestor to one another. God made an incredible variety of animals. We have horses today that stand all the way from just three feet tall up to over six feet tall. They have different shaped heads, very different body structures, just lots of variety. And the animals with different numbers of toes or different shapes are probably just varieties of a horse that are now extinct or totally different animals but have nothing to do with some sort of a creature slowly turning into a horse. The amazing abilities, structures, design of this animal is testimony to its creation by God, not the fact that a dog-like creature slowly turned into a horse. And everybody really knows that, and you don't even see those displays in museums anymore.